Hello, welcome. This is Blockchain Bloom, the blockchain educator. I'm Atala Pink, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about that Tether scores win in class action case as court dismisses RICO claims. The second thing I want to talk about is that 62% of institutions to start investing in crypto within a year, according to a survey. And the third news is all about that Gary Gensler is supporting futures-based Bitcoin ETFs, which is actually not the best for us, but this is now the case. Let's talk about that in today's video. And if you would like to get this fresh cryptocurrency and, and blockchain news, then simply just subscribe to this YouTube channel, Blockchain Bloom. Very simple, subscribe, bell button, oh, that's the moves you have to do. And then you're getting the notifications as soon as a new video is out. And I'm putting these videos on YouTube every weekday to keeping you up to date. Check out the links under the video. Many useful ones you can save money with in trading. For instance, if you register with that link on Binance, or I have a Coinbase link, an FTX link, a Kraken link, and so on and so forth. And also a free course, how to start to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So the links under the video. And now let's move on to the market where we can see that Bitcoin is now a little bit up compared to yesterday, 43,324 US dollar at the moment. And this is a 2% uh, increase. Then we have Ethereum, uh, three, just above 3,000. Uh, it is almost 3% uh, up. When we're looking at the winners, we see OMG Network 12% up. Then we see Leo 10% up, Binance Coin also going up 9%. And when we're looking at the losers, we see that Compound is the leader with 11%. Then we have Purchase Protocol 11% and uh, Seller Network 8%. This is how right now the top three here looks like. When we're looking at the Bitcoin chart, we can see that we had this nice green candle. We have this, you know, a four hour uh, candlestick chart here and which we have experienced today and also broke out of this triangle. You know, look at this support level, how nicely it was supported. And now we had this downtrend broke out. But again, look at this, we going down and this doesn't look good actually because it's obviously and obviously a downtrend what we have here right now you know we supposed to reach at least this 44000 level you know this one here and then go above it to having a higher high not having a lower high so now we're going this way so definitely altogether this market is still looking bearish at the moment there are many promises that October can change the game. And, you know, today is the last day of September. So, yes, we're going to see this pretty soon, but it still can happen that the Bitcoin price can go even further down to the 38,000 level as well. You know, this kind of 40,000 level, roughly speaking, was a very, very nice support so far, but we will see how it goes. You know, there are many people who are optimistic for the last quarter. There are others who are pessimistic like saying now it's, it's not looking good. And overall, I'm saying that because I'm looking at the big picture and looking crypto, Bitcoin and all the other guys, you know, Ethereum um, in the long term, it doesn't really matter what's happening in short term because crypto is going to stay here with us. This is what I believe and therefore I support it. But yes, it still can play out that it's continuously going down. We should be aware of it. When we looking at uh, this here, the Bitcoin short term uh, holder uh, SOPR, then we can see that here are the short term holders, which means here who is you know taking uh, out uh, Bitcoin in a profit or actually in a loss. And you can see here that this is how uh, heavily losses were uh, realized here and now not that many but look now as we can see here similar thing starts to happen so now people getting more and more pessimistic and we're talking about the short-term holders here we do know that the long-term holders the big whales they are accumulating and uh, when we're looking at this here you look the world's biggest companies versus Bitcoin in the last decade. And we're looking at the performance. And if you invest in the last 10 years, they're saying $100 
what would you have today? And you see here, right at the bottom, uh, Alibaba. And if you invest $100 now, 10 years later, you're having $200. Then you see Walmart, Johnson & Johnson, and we go up here on the list. And uh, when you have here Microsoft, then you have now 1K instead of, so it's, it's 10 times. Visa went even better. Apple, 2.4K you have. Even Amazon has a 3.3. And then you have Bitcoin. If you invested Bitcoin 10 years ago, then you have $9.2. Uh, $100, you have $9.2 million. So the gap here is major. None of the investments uh, can you can compare to Bitcoin. And I believe this growth will continue basically in the uh, future as well. All the for the, the crypto market, but now we, we're talking about here definitely the Bitcoin. So this is why I'm looking the longer term, why I'm looking at the this this big picture, for instance, this 10 year one, instead of looking at what's happening in a couple of weeks or a couple of months' time. And now let's talking about the first news. The first one is all about Tether's case. And this is good news for crypto and also for Tether. So we do know that, you know, there is this thing in the crypto and what is behind Tether and, you know, this uh, lawsuit against Tether. And now we can have a little relief. Yes, the problems are still around with stable coins. What will happen to stable coins? How the US will regulate stable coins? But at least this one here is getting uh, right. So Tether scores a win in class action case. Escort dismisses RICO claims. The judge in the class action lawsuit filed in the Southern District of New York against stablecoins issuer Tether and crypto exchange Bitfinex has granted motions to dismiss many of the claims in the case. According to the court document filed um, Tuesday in the Southern District of New York, District Judge has granted motions from uh, Tether's and Bitfinex uh, parent company Infinex to dismiss key claims in the plaintiff's case that two firms manipulated the crypto market. Altogether, the judge said uh, granted motions to dismiss five complete claims and part of one while denying six others. This case is doomed, said Tether in Wednesday blog post. Also, they're saying... Um, Litigation will expose this case for what it is, a clumsy attempt at money grab, which recklessly harms the whole cryptocurrency ecosystem. So basically, now it looks like it's all happening in favor for Tether, which is generally good for the crypto market, because what hap if something big happening to Tether, you know, somebody wins uh, a case against Tether, and that's, that could be serious because Tether has a huge, huge market cap. It's the market leader stablecoin. But now things looking promising at the moment. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. The next thing is that 62% uh, of institutions uh, are about to start investing in crypto within a year. This is what a survey has shown us. We see that big interest from institution sites. More and more companies joining the crypto game. And now here's another survey which shows this one. 62% of institutions to start investing in crypto within a year. Institutional investors expect to start buying crypto to increase their revenues over the long term. As many as 62% of global institution investors with zero exposure to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin said they expect to make their first investment in cryptocurrencies within the next year, according to the new survey by European investment manager Nickel Digital Asset Management. Um, released uh, Tuesday, uh, the survey interviewed 50 wealth managers and 50 institutional investors across the United States, United Kingdom, France, Germany, and the United Arab Emirates. And uh, there is no doubt that the crypto asset market is becoming more mainstream in the institutional and wealth management sector. Nichols, head of business development, 
Henry uh, Howell said. So yes, guys, we can see that even those companies, they haven't even touched crypto. Now 62% of them, I mean institutions, uh, are believing they going to invest in crypto in a year and this number going to just increase. And of course, if we're going in this direction, crypto getting bigger and bigger. Okay, the third thing is about the ETF, what Gary Genster wants, and this is not necessarily what we want, I guess. Again, in an interview, Gary Gensler said that he supports feature-based Bitcoin ETFs. And here you can see also this article. And Gensler uh, singled out Bitcoin ETFs, which invest in uh, future contracts that trade on Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange and register under the Investment Company Act of 1940, the so-called 40 Act. Uh, provides significant investor protection, he said in prepared remarks for Financial Times conference. I look forward uh, to staff's review of such feelings. Um, feelings, And, um, well, we do talk about an act which was made like 80 years ago. And, uh, yeah, this is actually uh, one thing. But the second thing is that this is not what we really want to, uh, we want because this would be basically an ETF which is connected to Bitcoin price and this is great for them but this is what they can uh, you know much more control it's not Bitcoin behind it we need a spot ETF basically this would be awesome uh, he struck a similar tone in August speech that uh, ignited a rush in Taylor made Bitcoin features ETF uh, fittings none has been approved by the SEC but industry observers expect a decision as early as October so many people in the industry believe that action October uh, ETF in the United States a Bitcoin ETF can come out we will see but a Bitcoin ETA futures uh, based ETF it's just not the same but actually would be ideal so the SEC is reviewing almost two dozen ETF fittings uh, for Bitcoin, Bitcoin features, Ether, and Ether feature products. So sooner or later, this is going to happen because we have already several in Canada and, you know, in other countries. But the biggie, the biggie would be definitely if we have the first Bitcoin ETF in the US. And the most amazing one would be if we have the real one where is real Bitcoin behind it. But yeah, okay, we will see how it goes. Guys, that's it for today. If you like this kind of content, smash the like button and also don't forget to join Blockchain Bloom because I'm putting here you on YouTube these videos every weekday to keeping you up to date. Or a simple subscribe bell button. Oh, that's the only thing you have to do. And then you're getting the notifications as soon as a new video is out. And I'm working on it that you get almost the newest stuff. And yes, tomorrow I'm coming back with the freshest. I wish you a nice day. Have a good one. Bye bye.